investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. As we're talking, I'm busy finishing up the iShares US Insurance ETF. Elio and the Dan uh, was asking about this, and I used to have it all notated. I don't know what happened anyway. I did a quick notation of the daily, weekly, monthly. It just took me those two, three minutes, and here we are. So I'll come back to it in a moment. I'm going to write it down because it's. I think it's a very important uh, index to follow. And this is the IAK. There was another one that I used to do. I think it was the S&P insurance. But in the meantime, um, that's at 125. All right, here we go. So let's just go through this because uh, this is a kind of a meandering couple of days here as we're waiting. We're waiting for some kind of a sign that says there's clarity in the market. That's all. Uh, in the meantime, let's just finish this up for the one-minute chart. Right there, C going to a D and then an E. Uh, you've got the 10-minute chart, brand new A over there and a brand new B. Uh, this is very important. I want you to do this now because it's, it's going to, in a sense, it's telling me about the market, so I needed to do it, A and a B. All right, so what we're looking at, and we go right from the very beginning. Start of the week, and we're looking at the Dow, um, overnight, actually, uh, the Dow was pretty weak last night, and it's come back quite a bit. It's down 76 uh, points, 78 points at 41,973. Okay, so this is what we've got. We've got a sell signal that got upgraded last week to a sell mode in the Dow. The long term, the weekly chart is still really strong, but it is at a peak E. And the monthly chart, because it's finished now, where we're finished with... Uh, October, so the monthly candle is complete, but it does mean to say we've made a peak. You have to wait for the complete next candle to close. That's the whole of November without a new high to say that that is a peak E. If we go 43,326, that's actually just a penny above that, 43,325 point, I think it's 12 or something. Uh, I should have put that in. Highs 09, 10, point 10. We go to point 10, one penny above that high, continues leg E. Even if it parallels that high, goes to point 09, that remains a leg E. I have to wait for another month, all of December. So one penny above, continues leg E. Uh, one penny below, point 08, 43,325, point 08. And you have made yourself a peak E in the monthly chart. And we're going to be watching that very closely. Now, this is a fascinating thing. In the Chevrolet methodology, you don't anticipate that there's a serious sell-off. I'm talking about serious, meaning monthly, not just a weekly. Until you get at least peak D or higher, A is first peak, peak B is second, P higher peak is peak C, higher peak is peak D. You can even go to E, F, and G, but there's never an H. But D or higher is where you can start to anticipate from here. There could be, doesn't have to be, but that's where you expect that you're going to get a much deeper correction if there is going to be one. So we've got the Dow in leg E. No new high this month makes a peak E, and then you've got to be real careful. And you've got an inverted red doji candle for the monthly candle. Remember, the regular red doji candle, upright, uh, Roman candle, Chapman Roman candle, is what we've seen, we saw back in 2008 at the all-time high, with it before that very, very sharp pullback, and we saw it, we've seen it in other major tops. We haven't got that here yet. This is an inverted red one. It would have the same effect. All I can say is on a weekly basis, if there's a close above 42,350, that's a close on a weekly basis. Normally, I do it on a daily because it has to be a shorter time frame. I'm taking it as a weekly. There's probably going to be a retest of the all-time high. 
The weekly chart has gone to a peak either it's pulling back underneath the inside track repellent. So I'm taking a little time now because there's really nothing to do. I said to subscribers, we're not going long, going short. We're not adding. We're not subtracting. We just have our positions and we put in the stops uh, and that's it. Let them be. We've only got long positions, no short. That's my error right here because I was still fumbling around. Wasn't 100% sure whether this was a peak C with the other wave count um, until I decided very soon afterwards that actually it was an alternate count E slash C and probably an E, I would have because the S&P in the daily chart did that very thing. Look, it went to a peak D. I, that alternate count worked. Peak C1, C2 is the Chapman Wave technique. I discussed it on Friday where it just fails by a fraction to get to the uh, next to a penny higher than the peak C and therefore it could have a pullback. And very often with C1, C2, especially if it's C1, C2, C3, you can go to a D very often, and then you can't got to be careful. Well, we went to another peak, A, B, C, D. So the S&P daily chart went to 58, 78, 46, and it has made a dreaded H pullback. For some reason, I, I, I had it on the, in the newsletter. We would get by the SPXS three times short. I just didn't feel like I wanted to be beholden in my mind to what could be a very volatile week. And it's silly because I have to, I like to look at charts in two ways. One is what's happening now, and the other is what's the news event that's either just been or just about to come that could make a change. So as I'm looking at it right now, I'm saying, you know, election, it doesn't matter, election, election. This is the chart says the daily is SP, the daily Dow. Are in cell signal. The Dow uh, daily is in a cell mode. The S&P is just really close to a cell mode, but the weekly chart is still very strong, and that's at a, an alternate count G slash C. Monthly chart has gone to a leg F. Could be an instant restart. I want to make it complicated. It's called it an F, and it's a monthly major from the 666 low of 2009. This inside track is still potent. It went. It kept getting repelled, then it got pushed above it, and then the monthly closed right on the green line, uh, and now we're still on this upper green line of the inside track repellent zone, so I have to go under the pink line on a monthly basis that would be underneath uh, 5656. Yeah, 5656, and all of a sudden that monthly chart is saying, oops, be careful. But look, the 9 is way over the 14. The MACD is good. The stochastic's flat at 95%. The, the on-balance volume has pulled back from being overbought. Nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing wrong. I was with someone uh, yesterday, one, one of our tigers, very long-term tiger, um, and we were looking at monthly charts. And it's just fascinating because none of the charts at this particular point are showing anything other than strength between the price, the nine period moving average, and the 14 period moving average. Um, and whether you do it on a quarterly basis or monthly basis, it's pretty much the same thing. However, if you look at the QQQ, we've made a, a, a potential peak C here with just two points below, less than two points below the 503.38 high. That was made, was it last Monday, on the 29th? It went to 501.35. I may as well type that in because I've been talking about it a lot. 501, 501.35. And that is less than two points away from all-time high. Um, this could turn out in the end to be a peak C1. C2, if there's a sharp pullback, I'll be right back. The Dow is down. And 95, the S&P is down. Uh, it's up one. I'll be right back. That's what's happening. Fighting time as the market is. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. So the QQQ is right now, the 9 period moving average, this is not even the first hour of the, of the whole week, so we can't talk about it as if it's the, if the day is closed. Um, the 9 period moving average has just gone negative. Uh, we'll see if that remains the case. It's up 7 cents at 487.45. I'm suspecting that we've really got a rectangle formation, just a holding pattern for now, and could last quite a few days. And the weekly chart has gone to a, kind of a double top. And we'll talk about that as the week unfolds. But in the meantime, what's needed is 503.33 to go to a leg D in the weekly chart, in the monthly chart. And that would be, if it's this week, it just extends the leg C with an alternate count in the, week, in the weekly chart. But that really helps the MACD, which went negative, go back to positive. The stochastic is great at 88%. On bounce volume weekly is, is pulling back, but it's still very strong. And the 9 is over the 40. Nothing wrong right there. IWM. IWM is uh, having a very nice session today. Up 140, I should mention, we are along the Dow. We are long, uh, call along the Dow. We are still call along the uh, IWM from the low of, uh, August, of uh, August. And we are looking at this as a potential peak C1, C2 right now. That's not a potential. That is the case in the weekly chart. But all the technicals are strong enough that there could be, it's a little, the distance is a little much from, to go from 220 to 227.18. But actually, I really would like to see 228. Wasn't 228 the number that I was looking at before? Uh, yeah, 228.63. So 228.67 is really needed to break above the high that was made back in, I think it was July. Yeah, July 228.63. Yeah, 64.64 .64 is needed to go to the end. It is making a potential cup formation. It'll break down. If the IWM starts to trade, not, not just go there, but trade in the 213s anytime this week, seven points lower, 
that'll, that'll not be a good sign at all, both for the day and maybe for the weekly, although that's really the technicals are still pretty good. Looking at the SMH is very important, and I, NVIDIA was uh, elected to go into the Dow as Intel. Isn't that fascinating? Intel had a very nice session um, on, th on Friday, uh, and now it's going to be... Uh, well, this is a very interesting, I, I don't want to get into it, I don't want to take too much time. I'll do a little bit of work over the next few days if I even think it's worth it about the Dow, how they so often pick, remember they picked Microsoft and then Microsoft had uh, quite a bit of a dip and then it had a fabulous move up and now it's stalling. So their choosing of instruments to be in the Dow is just quite fascinating because now we're starting to get an overweighting of the um, tech sector. We never had that before. It was just IBM, Cisco. Uh, now, you've got, you know, now you've got a bunch. And IBM has pulled back from the 237.37 high in a leg D in the monthly leg, E a peak E in the weekly, and a peak D with a round number high the day of the opening. It went to 232 round number open, and it goes to 237.37 back in mid-October. And then there's a gap down a week or a half later, and it hasn't, uh, it really hasn't turned since. So I'm watching this to say, oh man, the Dow's taking Nvidia, although Intel was really a, oh, they chose Intel, in fact, if you remember correctly, and all it did was go down. So let's just finish this up now. So that that's the SMHs. I'm looking at the SMHs and saying they're holding okay. They're not doing great. The chart in the weekly chart says. Hmm, it's making higher highs and higher lows. That should be um, that rectangle lopsided V or uh, gravy cup formation that goes towards the previous high and it goes just under, right on or just above the previous high. And then you've got to be careful. That's a 283.07. No, this is actually just a stalling motion in the SMHs. Van X Semiconductor ETF peak D for months now, three months. It's had a, had a peak D in the um, monthly chart at all-time highs in the 280 area and 283.07. And here it is um, in the weekly chart sideways. More like, looks more like it wants to arch over, and it is arching over. It's in a sell mode in the uh, daily chart. So that's what we're looking at. All right, let's just go through a lot of questions about gold. So gold is having a high-level consolidation, went to an alternate account, G slash B. Nothing wrong. The nine period moving average is above the 14. The MACD did turn down, and the relative strength is weak. The stochastic has gone from above 80% to 76%, and the on-balance volume has pulled back. But the 914, to me, that's, that's the golden rule. You can have all kind of just if that nine is over the 14 and you are long, uh, well, we are long a gold stock, we're long, not long gold per se. Um, then uh, that's all you want to see. Where does it break down? A close under 265. It's a 275 right now. I know I said 263 to be certain that this is actually a G top. And in the weekly chart, you had a doji candle uh, high last week. And I'm just watching this closely to say, so far it's holding well. Here's the, here's the whole thing. The GDX, I showed this to my subscribers in my overview over the weekend, on Friday that is. Every weekend for subscribers I have an hour long, it was actually more than an hour, hour long video. And that video goes to our positions, what we're looking at, what we're looking at in the market, why such and such is occurring, etc. So in this particular instance, the GDX, has not participated as well as gold. It's not bad, but right now it's not looking too great. It's up 39 cents at 40.24. I believe that is going to be a G. I should call it a G right now. Top in the daily, a peak D in the weekly, and a leg D in the monthly. I think there's a bit of a rest coming in the GDX at this particular point. If you look at silver, silver was acting much better. Even now, the chart is a little bit better. Even the weekly chart is a little bit better. It's up 0.04 at 32.73. It's analog D in the monthly chart. So I don't see anything wrong in the silver chart other than short term. If there is a break below 31.60, it's at 32.73 right now, a close below 32.31.60, that probably changes it and makes this an arch formation uh, top that says it should be testing the lower range, and that just is the whole area of 31 
to 30 is going to be really important to hold if there's a further pullback. I want to quickly go to high-grade copper. High-grade copper is finally up. Oh, a nice chart. Wow, we haven't talked about this uh, as, a, as a positive for ages. It's just been going sideways. But look, that nine-period moving average is so close to turning up. The MACD is so close to turning positive. The retro strength has already been moving up. And you've got the on-balance volume turning up. So there's a chance that high-grade copper is going to have a bounce. Where's the resistance? The resistance is right here on the 11th of October, 4.49. Let's call it 4, 4.50. If it can close about 4.50, a close. That's really good. And what do we have? We have the start. I can't even put an up arrow in because none of the technicals would confirm that. But look, here's your peak A. Then this is the low bar, right? Trough, trough A. Remember on the way down, we talk about troughs on the way up. We talk about peaks. Trough A. I believe that that's a B, and that's a C. Real quickly, 43295, 43295. Yeah, no, this is a C right here. And I'll put a plus sign under it to say there is a sign to say that it's trying to move higher. So A, B, and it's in the leg C. So this is what I'm saying. Uh, I had a question over the uh, Friday, I think, after, after the close, about a copper. And I didn't really do anything uh, over the weekend on copper, but I'm doing it right now. So SCCO, Southern Copper, uh, it's actually in a cell mode. It's trying to turn up. It hasn't yet. So I think this is just, uh, it's in the works. It's trying, it's trying to turn up. I'll be back. Dow's down 108. S&P's down. If you spend any down. time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hello, you are back. Let me just get back to this over here. Okay, so um, so we did we did the copper, and what I'm saying is. Uh, FCX, let's look at FCX. Yeah, there's a nice little bounce in uh, Freeport, Freeport McMoran um, going to a peak C and then it kind of pulls back. You can even make this uh, 40, uh, 4898. 4898, you could make this. This is where you can use this as a, a phantom peak because it had parallel highs, had a little hiccup in the on balance volume at exactly the point. So you can use that and say, I, I, I need to get to a D. Uh, as quickly as possible, based on the notation of of the peaks, just so that I'm ready. If you were expecting that this was a C, and waiting for the D, you went from 52 down to 47, uh, 44, 44, and you're still waiting. And that's the way you can do it. You have a phantom peak. All the indicators suggesting stochastic goes from up in the 90% area down under 80% that this could be a lower highs and lower lows, and that's exactly what it's done. So that would have got you ready for it, and that would have been a down arrow. So that's Freeport Bank. Yeah, I'm, I think uh, it's a little early to get too aggressive, aggressively long, but you could maybe start a very small position. I'd probably choose SCCO, uh, but... Uh, I, I'm going to wait. I just need to wait for many things before I really get carried away about looking at the long side or even the short side. Right at this moment, my bias is to say that we should have a breather regardless. If the, there wasn't an election, I'd be saying we should have a breather because of the, the peaks that are made in the daily charts. All right, so there's FCX. Next question came in. Am I correct in the next question? Oh, let me just do this quickly. Look, the TLT. I was talking about this last week, and I said the TLT, that's the bonds, had a left side, right side price time match in arch formation in the daily chart. But what happens very often, if it misses the, what I call the midpoint, um, and that could be a flexible thing. Sometimes it's really obvious, sometimes it's not. But if it's what I consider to be where the price should have been on the uh, 21st of October, and they should have been testing the low of the 24th of July, 9147. Um, and in the time, it should have been that's the day. What happens is if it misses it very often, it, the, the downward momentum or upside momentum is so powerful that it misses it, but then it continues and it goes lower, and then you get a pretty decent bounce. Or on the upside, it misses it and goes higher, and then you get a pullback. Well, look what happened. It misses it, it had a little bounce, and a couple of days later, five sessions later, it went right through that level, had a big bounce, and that bounce couldn't hold, and on Friday, it, it zipped all the way down, and it went to the 90.80 low, and that's lower than the low that was made back on the 24th of 91.47, and today it's trying to rally. Now, is this rally the same as all the others? Well, look, finally the MACD turned up. Finally, the red for strength turned up. Finally, the histogram has a plus. Nope, it isn't plus yet. It is very plus, very close to being plus. Um, oh, wait, no, it is 0 0.05. Yes, it turned up. So the nine period moving average in the MACD is positive. The stochastic is still very weak at 23%. The on balance is very weak. So this is a mixed picture. And that's just saying that yields are... I'll go to the TBT because that's like the mirror image. Here we go, TBT. And that almost made a double top uh, exact high at 34.54 on the 29th. Pulled back sharply to the 14 period moving average and then worked its way to where? 34.61. So three cents away 
and now it's pulling back. So this says, yes, the line period moving average is fabulous. It's over the 14. The MACD is just about to turn down. Remember the, the, the TLT, the MACD was just about crossing. The histogram was turning up and the retro strength was turning up and here it's turning down. Stochastics under 80% at 76%. This is exactly the moment that you would say, this is where we get a test of strength in the TLT or weakness and it's the same thing in the TBT, the Ultra Short Limit 20 Year Treasury Bond ETF. And if you go to the TNX, here we go, TNX and X, that is the 10 year yield. Um, alternate count, I've got a G slash C, but this is exactly where, um, there it is, G. You're going to get a test of strength or weakness. I have to give it three, I have to actually give it till Friday at four o'clock. So if the TNX, the 10 year, Treasury note yield. So as to going to the 44 area, that means bonds are coming, still, uh, still coming down, yields are going up. And if the TLT can hold this gain and start to trade, I said last week, it has to get to the 92.84 200 period moving average for the pink nine period moving average to actually cross, sorry, Yes, for the pink nine period moving average to cross positive, that's a big way to go. We're going to be watching this very closely. My, my thinking right now, just for the moment, is that we're in a rectangle formation, and that rectangle formation can last a little bit longer, uh, and we'll get a real test. In the weekly chart of the TLT, we did this inverted Chapway falling axe formation, and we've gone from a peak D in a single leg A to the downside, Single leg, sh very sharp, move to the downside, often produces a really good rebound. So we're watching this very closely. The monthly chart says, I don't know what you're getting excited about. I'm making a lowercase h to a lowercase m stuck in a rectangle formation. I'm just in a trading band. So that was a lot of talking just to say that. Um, next thing I want to look at, I'm going to get to that insurance one. I just wanted to see I'm covering everything here. Oh, crude oil. Crude oil right now is having a bounce. No, no, more than a bounce. Uh, up $1.39 at 70.88. It's trying to get back to that 200 period moving average of 72.21. If it's able this week to close above it, that's going to be positive. But right now, a lot of work needs to be done to get the nine period moving average closing over the 14. The MACD to close, uh, have the histogram go positive. The rental strength index is rallying, and the stochastics going from the under 20% to 33, 34%. Uh, it's a good sign, but the weekly chart says, ah, just stuck in a range, and that's all there is to it. Okay, question came in about IAK. IAK, which is the iShares US Insurance ETF. Look, look how many Ds we got and Es in the, and Fs in the week, monthly charts. That just says to me, this is a period where you've got to have, you've got to be on standby for some kind of a digestive phase. Doesn't have to happen. But you got to be ready for it. So leg D, all of all of this month, if it doesn't go above, is that the music again? Oh, time's flying. If it doesn't go above 133.82 in November, in November, it's made a peak D. Peak G says C in the weekly. Peak F sharp pullback in the day. I'll talk about it when I reach it. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, just before I go to IAK, let's just look at a Bitcoin I promised I would look at it. Um, I, this is a pink C, but there's a really good chance that I have to call this a GSAS C because if it pulls back at 60,755 down 975, if it pulls back just a little more, if it actually closes under 67,700, 1,000 points lower, um, that would make look like a top. Everything about it would look like top, even though the nine-period moving average is still strong. So I'm just giving it time. We are long. Um, I'm anticipating that this cup and handle in the monthly chart is going to unfold. I think it's going to be a process. We started the process but it might take just a little bit of a digestive week after a really nice move to the upside to unfold. Let's go to the IAK. So the IAK is the U.S. insurance ETF, iShares, leg D, maybe a peak D if it doesn't go above 133. What did I say, 42? I think it was 133, 133, 82, 82. And a peak GST, as a GSAC, it's almost see this, this right arm extension this is the one that you've got to be a little careful of. It could fail, uh, but so far the 9 is way over the 14. That's good. The MACD is weak. Stochastic is under 80%. That's weak. Nine, the uh, nine, unbounds volume is, is starting to pull back. Uh, it's the weekly chart, and you've got a peak F already in the uh, weekly. So I'm watching this area because it's been an area of really good strength all the way from July of last year. It's just been steadily up. Even the peaks have been just barely peaks. And now it's taking a digestive phase. So this kind of coincides with a lot of what I'm looking at that's saying, be ready for some kind of a pullback here. This is a sell mode in the daily, nothing yet in the weekly chart. So the question is, uh, what about it? And I'm just saying, if it closes under 122, it's at 125 right now. If it closes under 122, it's going to impact the daily chart sell mode and continues. And the weekly will probably, I have to look at the chart pattern, but I suspect that the weekly is going to go to a sell signal. So it needs a lot. It needs a really good rally into the 128. It's a 125 right now. Just be careful. So the question came in, uh, Ben, let's see. Oh, SHW, Sherman Williams, and Home Depot. So let me just Home Depot. So Home Depot is in a sell mode in the daily. It had round number just after its 421.56 most recent high. Uh, All-time high is 420.6. These double tops are amazing in charts. 
December of 2021, it goes to 42061. It just cascades down to the 270 level. I mean, it gets almost cut off. Then it goes, there's a Home Depot. A, big B, a little A underneath it. B, overlapping wave. It's usually very positive. It should take you a C and a D. It takes you to a C and then it takes you a D, a D, a D in the monthly. Where is the D at 421.56? Four years later, three years later, uh, over three years later, and it goes to within, within one and a half points of the all-time high. And now it's stalling again. And that's a peak D in the weekly. So I'm saying to myself, I looked at a lot of these charts over the week, and I said, you know, we are ready for a digestive phase. What would start a whole new move to the upside? Oh, it has to be the market looks very positively at whatever it perceives as the result over the weekend. And then uh, um, the question was, um, Sherman, Sherman Williams makes a lot of peak Ds. Where is it now? I don't think I've updated it for a little while. So it made a peak E. There's that right arm extension. It's not a rogue wave. It's a right arm extension going to a new high, recovery high in the uh, daily chart up to the 390s. Comes tumbling down today. Oh, get, get, must have had news because today it's up 14. It did go to 383.70, opened at 382.20. So I'm watching this closely. It made a peak C. No, no, I haven't updated it. It's a peak D. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And I made a note of this some time ago, um, how peak D loves, uh, how Sherman Williams, the paint company, you remember Tom used to always say, it's green or it's red. Sherman Williams just needed to get green again. Yeah, so look at this. We're looking at it today. Big, big red candle, but with a huge gap to the upside. And look, a peak from the lows that were made back in 2022, I think it was October, weren't you? A peak D, pull back huge, like an arch formation. Then it goes, another one, ABC, another peak D back in July or so of 2023 in the 270 area, pulls back, starts right at the 200 period. Look how important this 200 period moving average has been or had been. To Sherman Williams, and then it goes peak A, peak B, peak C, and lo and behold, another. I mean, if anybody had a technique like this that produced this number of peaks at the same letter, they would be saying, wow, that is important. Well, that's what I've been saying since I discovered this back when I was hand charting. There's your peak D, and lo and behold, it just made a recent peak D uh, again. And there's this beautiful cup formation. And let me just do this. So uh, uh, I don't know. I don't want to do this now. Maybe tomorrow I'll do this left side, right side, price, time match. So this is basically a bowl or a cup with a handle, a pretty deep handle, which says in the cup and handle pattern, not the cup and ch the chap wave cup and later, which is fantastic. The cup and handle, which says, oh, yeah, if you get the time you right, it's a great move. But don't be surprised if it comes back to the left side. Look, look what happened to Sherman Williams. It had a huge move to uh, 392. 392.57. Any round numbers there? Yeah, round number right there, 391, uh, three days after the uh, recent all-time high. Then it cascades from 390 down to Friday's low in the three, uh, 357 level. Now it pops up. So that's your peak E. Pulls back. This is a peak A. No, it took that out. So this is a new gray A because it's just started to move. And this is a peak D in the weekly chart. Remember, we discussed how many peak Ds there are. Did I do that in the daily or the weekly? Uh, we did in the daily. Well, look at the weekly chart. That was the weekly chart. All right, I thought I remembered it. Um, haven't updated it. And leg E in the uh, monthly chart. See how many times we've gotten to these and we've got some kind of a little double topish pattern right here. I'm just a little cautious. I'm thinking, you yeah, know, the market deserves some kind of a, a pullback. And also when the Fed, the, the history is that when the Fed lowers rates, very often that's when you get some kind of a pullback. All right, so I did that. Schumann Williams, and I can't remember exactly. Oh, the question was the peak Ds. Yeah, weekly peak D, but that is a rogue. This is not a rogue wave. It is a right arm extension. You know that little, little icon that you have there of the person holding up a hand, like when we used to do at school and you wanted to leave the room? to go to the bathroom or go and visit your friend, uh, raise your right arm. That's the right arm extension. All right, and we've got that in the daily. 
then it pulled back, made a lower low, but not uh, in the big arch formation. And then it had a big pop today, probably on earnings. And so they should go to Home Depot. Wait, Home Depot is up today, up five. Okay, so Home Depot, peak D in the daily, peak D in the weekly, and leg D in the monthly. And look at that peak D uh, in December of 2021 at 420.61. Oh, you've got to respect these. So, yeah, be ready for some kind of a digestive phase. Next question came. I hope I helped you. No, I didn't. We were talking about IAK. Did I give you all the... Yes, I gave you the levels to watch. The 122 is going to be really important to hold. Well, we've got a break coming up. I think I've got all my questions done. There was another one. Oh, you have screamers. Yeah, this was on Thursday, and then I completely forgot. You have screamers. Could you mention some screamers? These are stocks under $10. I'll be back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So, as I looked at the market over the weekend, my, I waited for today to unfold. But I'm thinking that all the charts that I'm looking at at this particular point, the ones that I'm interested in, and I mean, even the IWM, uh, was it appropriate to add an aggressive long, which is something that I thought about. And then I thought, I don't want risk for uh, my subscribers. But going into tomorrow, there's a chance, I, I haven't made my mind up yet, that I might start positions in stocks that I really, we've missed out on, or they're starting to build some kind of strength. So we want to be in them, 
and we'll just put a stop. If you stop out, just stop out. This is the way it is. But if it works, and that's the rotation we're looking at right now. Why is the IWM up 2.39, one up 1.09 percent? The Dow's down 23 percent, 0.23 percent, and the uh, S and P is only up 0 0.15, and the QQQs are up 25.25. <clears throat> huh? I mean, something's happened. This rotation is important. So with that said, I said I'd, I'd mentioned a couple of, for instance, my screamer list. We haven't got anything right now. I've just got them on the list. We didn't choose to do anything. I didn't choose to do anything. G GBTG. Mm -mm. This is global business travel. Why is it doing so well? At $7.82 unchanged today. The peak C in the weekly chart. So these are just a very low price, under $10 that I'm looking at, and I'm saying, hmm, UIS, you remember Unisys? I don't even remember. I just remember the name Unisys. I can't remember what they did. <clears throat> Might have been communications. Very nice mover up at 738. So there are a lot of stocks that are just <clears throat> showing their, their metal. And I'm saying to myself, mankind, and this one always shows up and then it doesn't do very much unless you get it perfectly. Mankind, this is... Um, Mankind Corporation, speculates an endocrine orphan drug, lung disease. Uh, recovery high, doing very nicely at $7.29. Anyway, so there are stocks that I'll look, I'm looking at that 